In this video, we're going to go through the testing sequences. We're going to be following the test sequence Cripper. First of all, we're going to go with C. So we're going to test the continuity of the bonding. So get your tester, flick it to ohms, and then we're simply going to test between the bonding and the tail coming in out here. So remove that. Now when we're testing the bonding, make sure we're testing it on the copper itself, not on the earth uh, bar. So test between the copper and the tail. Now you should be getting a reading of anything less than 0 0.05. Anything higher, and it needs investigator. Okay, so that's the continuity of the bonding done. Now we're going to test the continuity of the circuit CPC using the R1 plus R2 method. We're going to do this on this lighting circuit here. So first of all, we need to locate um, our, our circuit CPC. So remove the circuit CPC and the circuit line conductors. Now, place these in a connector lock. Now that's connected the two cables, so now I'm going to check up the light pendant. I'm going to check between the CPC and the switch live, and hopefully I should get a reading. So we're testing across the CPC and the switch live. Perfect, getting a reading there. Perfect. Now when you get your reading, make sure that it complies with the regulations stipulated in the on-site guide. Now that's the R1 plus R2 on the lighting circuit. Now once you've completed that test, always ensure that you remove the connector block, return in the CPC and the live connector. So the next test we're going to do is a continuity of a ring final circuit. Now the first test we're going to do on the continuity of the ring final circuit is our end-to-end -end tests. Quite simply, we're going to test between one end of a conductor to the other end. So in this one I'm going to start with the live conductors. So simply clamp on one end of the live conductor to the other end of the line conductor. And there we have, got my reading. Now between all three conductors, the tolerance should be 0.05. Okay, that's a successful test. Now the CPC is a slightly smaller size than the other two conductors. Now if we were to go into it in depth and a bit further, we would have to, when we get our CPC result, we would times that result by 1.67. But independently, I will write each one of those results down on my test sheet. Our first test we're gonna do is align and neutral conductors. This is gonna help us confirm polarity. So we're going to remove the line and neutral conductors and connect them in the figure of eight method. In this board, because it's using singles, they've been marked up. So we've got our incoming tails marked up with this uh, grey tape and the outgoings have nothing at all. This allows me to identify which cables um, I can cross over. So I'll put the outgoing put the outgoing line with the incoming neutral and the incoming line with the outgoing neutral. So once I've got my figure of eight connected in my connector block, I can then move on to the sockets. I'm going to test each individual socket 
and obviously I'm going to test between line and neutral. Now I'm getting a reading. Now this, this test we don't write down, this is just for us to confirm polarity. Okay, great. Every socket has a reading. Now what this is telling me is behind that socket there, I have got a line and a neutral. It doesn't tell me which order those cables are placed in. What it does tell me is they're there. So when we conduct our R1 plus R2 test next, this will help us confirm polarity. So using the same method, the figure of eight method, I'm now going to put my line and CPC conductors together. Now I've got my line and CPC conductors connected in the figure of eight. I can now test again at each individual socket. Now, the reading I'm going to record on my test sheet is the highest reading from all the sockets. Now again, because I'm testing between line and CPC, this is going to help me confirm polarity because I've just done my R1 plus Rn. Okay, my highest reading was 0 0.13 ohms, so that is the recording I'll write down. Next in the testing sequence is I, which is insulation resistance. Now before we continue this process, we have to ensure that all the bulbs and any equipment is removed from the circuit. Now make sure your tester is set at 500 volts on the mega ohm selection. Take your test lead, place it on the circuit you wish to test, and on the neutral bar. Great. So we're looking for anything greater than one mega ohm. Now you're reading, your, your tester's probably going to show something greater than 299 or greater than 999. Uh, but anything off the scale is okay. Now we're going to test between line and CPC. Great, and now we're going to test across CPC and neutral. Okay, great. So I've just tested the whole circuit. Now when we're doing insulation resistance test on a lighting circuit, always make sure you operate the switches to test both sides of the circuit. So now we've successfully completed all the dead tests. So the first part of the crippler. If we were to continue, we would do live polarity, uh, ZE and the RCD tests. Thank you for watching. Please remember to subscribe and more videos will come soon. Thank you.